this video may be the most important one from our no fluff trading video series because it discusses the basics of the footprint a bfi footprint now for those who are sleeping bfi banks and financial institutions that's who we care about when they sell or when they buy that's what moves price not me and you but the bfis and we need to understand this footprint which we can see only after they step and they print can we know what exactly happened at the origin of this footprint but we need to define this bfi footprint and here's the definition an impulsive move that breaks previous market structure let's break each word down because it's really important and by the time we're done with this video you should be able to understand what a footprint is and understand the definition of it let's start with the first part an impulsive move clearly there are a lot of types of impulsive moves it could be a very strong one what do i mean by strong it goes a to b in a few candles versus maybe a move that takes 30 candles to get there is weaker but there's an impulsive move and it could be strong it could be weak the number of candles from a to b maybe can tell you and that's definitely a big factor in this footprint is the impulsive move and the way it moved from point a to point b let's look at the next important word which is breaks so this impulsive move or this upwards impulsive move breaks previous market structure but let's focus on breaks and how it could break let's just say we'll get to that word but let's just say that this is a previous market swing point and what do we mean by that a few candles up and maybe a few candles down you can think of it as a u-turn so there's a previous swing point and then there impulsive move breaks this swing point now let's look at the two kinds of breaks the market can break it with through a body and close above the market can also It's not a body, but it breaks it, but it ends up as a wick, although it did break it. If this breaks it by one pip, it's a valid footprint. Is it a strong one? Are they strong break? No, very weak, but we need to understand it's valid. And understand that it could be a body that closes above or it could break and end up as a wick and maybe even a down move after that but the way it breaks is also important to differentiate with a footprint every single footprint is unique and different and you have to be able to read the footprint 
from a neutral standpoint? Is it strong or is it weak? Are you against it or are you with it? Let's look at the next word, which is previous. Now, previous to what? This is an impulsive move, A to B, and it broke previous market structure, but by previous, previous to the origin, previous to the origin of the A to B move. And you can even baby pip style, put a vertical line and something to the left has to break or else it's not a valid footprint. This is not a valid footprint until it breaks this previous swing point. A swing point that occurred before this A to B movement happened. Why is this so important? Because let's look at this selling here, which was red. All of this selling, somebody came in and it was completely, you can think of it as completely absorbed and even more. And then there was a footprint. But the fact that these sellers got taken out tells us that the buyers are in control. This is why it's so important. It has to completely wipe the previous swing point. The harder and stronger, the better, the stronger the footprint. But that's what we mean by previous, previous to the origin of the A to B move. Now this last point, previous, okay, we understand that, market structure. There's a few ways we can say that. They can call it swing points. Like we said earlier, a few candles down and then maybe a few candles up. This is a swing point, not every candle is a swing point you want a nice clean swing point the better but let's take a look at this the market is going down and here it is and let's say it enters into a buy zone Here are the swing points. Here's one, here's another one, here's another one. What's the difference between a footprint that only breaks this and then comes back versus a footprint that breaks all of these and then maybe comes back? The point is, If it breaks one footprint or one previous swing point, if this breaks only one previous swing point and then returns very weak zone, if it breaks multiple and then comes back very strong zone, although it's the same price levels, but like we said here there's probabilities at the first retest which means how many swing points did it break how much market structure was broken here's some good advice don't trust a footprint that breaks the first previous market structure the first swing point the earliest swing point because what do we say it could just be 
a retracement and it wipes it so it's not really reliable to use just the first market structure break although it is a valid footprint but a very weak one what do we want to see it breaks multiple and then it comes back that is the higher probability so it's all probabilities at the first retest what is the footprint you're dealing with it's so important and it's a key part of your approach and it's a logical approach you just have to look if you're trading at a zone look at the footprint that you used because every zone has to be validated with a valid footprint yes it could be valid but there's shades there's flavors it could be a super weak one some four hour basing zone that just broke a very little swing point versus maybe a weekly footprint so it's probabilities like we say but understanding the footprint and the definition of a footprint it's just an impulsive move that maybe breaks a previous market structure the more the better and the stronger and it just means the more that they sold at the origin and the stronger the zone not a bad idea to get to work if it were to come back to this origin hopefully this clarifies what a bfi footprint is because that's a key part to this no fluff trading series as we go along especially as we discuss volume in the next few videos we need to understand this is step one the footprint of the zone and how strong it is or how weak it is and understanding the definition of it we'll take a look at an example before we go on to the next one look at this very weak swing point but it is candles down candles up and we did get a break which is a valid footprint we also had this which is another swing point notice that there's also another origin from here the market returned to this origin you had a slight reaction triggered some selling but went up here look at this footprint here when it breaks multiple it just means it's a stronger footprint from this origin not a bad idea to get to work when it returns to the origin of a strong footprint there are strong footprints and weak footprints and there are some footprints that come from a basing zone from a down movement pause and then another down movement for a full bearish continuation we call it but these basing zones especially on a four hour are very weak and yes it's a valid footprint it's a valid zone and maybe you got a valid trade but it's all probabilities in the end understand your footprint understand your zone understand the strength or the weakness the context and maybe you'll get a better idea of the probabilities start with understanding the footprint and its definition and then that will clarify what we mean when we discuss volume because understanding volume you have to understand the origin of the a to b move because the only way an a to b move occurs is if there is some 
volume and there is some work being done and that volume video will clarify that drawing the proper origin and using volume to do that but this one is strictly on understanding the footprint and the definition of a footprint and hopefully now you can see a footprint in a more neutral view and understand probabilities when you understand how to draw a footprint and the way footprints occur and how strong they are and how weak they are and if they're four hour or 15 minute or weekly you'll understand probabilities